Hey there, everybody, and welcome to the channel. I'm your host, Pubo Rama, and in today's video, we are going to be talking about the top six investments that you can make in Grand Theft Auto Online. What I mean by investments are properties or things that you can purchase that over the long run will give you more money in your bank account. And while it may cost a lot in the beginning for the upfront cost, it is most definitely worth it in the grand scheme of things. In the number six position, we actually have the newest business added into the game, which is the Chop Shop. I actually really enjoy using this business now. And it's quite ironic because when it was first added into the game, I said it was quite bad. And the major reason I thought it was bad is because of the fact that you're only able to sell three cars a week. But what I quickly realized is that actually the best way of making money with the Chop Shop is using the tow truck. And that's where your big money is. For example, you can sell, or should I say salvage, two cars every 48 minutes doing tow truck missions. And it only takes you about five minutes on average to grab a car and bring it back to the chop shop. So 10 minutes for two cars. And in return, you are getting around $80,000 just in cash after the 48 minutes runs up from salvaging the cars. But you are also going to get a passive income in the business. Every two cars you salvage is going to increase it to the maximum of $24,000 every 48 minutes. And it is going to slowly decrease over time as you don't salvage vehicles. Essentially, if you do two cars in 10 minutes and you get that $24,000 of passive income and you don't touch it, you're probably gonna net close to $300,000 by the time it runs out. That's a pretty solid chunk of cash in your bank for only about 10 minutes of effort. When you pair that with the fact that now Rockstar has added the ability to steal certain cars during update weeks and actually keep them in your garage for the low price of like $10,000, I would actually say the Chop Shop is an incredibly underrated business, and it's one of the best properties to get your hands on just because of how much passive income you can make over time. Just a bit of advice, OVs salvage your vehicles when you steal them instead of selling them. You can sell a car, let's say for $400,000, you can salvage it for 300 grand. And you might be wondering, well, why would I salvage the car if I can sell it instantly and get more cash? And the reason is very simple. When you salvage the car, as I said before, it gives you that passive income. So you're actually gonna make more money over time if you salvage the vehicle rather than selling it. So just salvage, that's my personal advice. In the number five position, we arrive to the auto shop. This is one of the most important purchases you can make, whether you are a new or experienced player, especially if you are a new player though. On my Broke to Billions account, the new one that I literally just started a couple weeks ago, I already purchased the auto shop. That was literally the second property I bought right after getting my hands on the agency. Why, you might ask? Well, it's quite simple. In the auto shop, if you are under level 100, every single upgrade is unlocked for your vehicles. That is huge. For example, if you're not level, let's say 30, you're not gonna be able to get like engine tunes upgrade level two or three or four at that. And owning an auto shop allows you to bypass all the level locks and just upgrade your car to the max. And because of that, it is already an S tier business, but it gets even better. Let's say I don't like the hood design on my vehicle. Well, I can change it to the GT hood. Normally this would cost me about $12,000, but in the auto shop, every single upgrade is 5% cheaper. And while that may not sound like a lot right now, when you realize, you know, maybe if you own 50 or 60 cars and you could have upgraded each one of those inside of the auto shop, you probably would have saved millions and millions of dollars. It is why on my Broke to Millions account, I'm only upgrading my vehicles inside the auto shop and I would highly recommend to do so as well. Always leave a slot in here and then after you're done upgrading your car in the auto shop, drive it over to a different garage, rinse and repeat. But this isn't the only way to make money with this business. You also have auto shop contracts, which is going to pay you a lot of money. The union depository is the highest paying by far. It's going to give you a total of $300,000 each time you complete it. That's a lot of money, especially when Rockstar gives you double or even ooh, triple 
payout in the auto shop. Wow, is that insane. I'm really hoping they do that again because I will be taking advantage of it on my rags to riches account. But yeah, the auto shop has great ways of making money. And in fact, if you take a look at your job board and you see that, oh, I don't have the union depository. Well, it's really easy to fix that. Choose one of the jobs, leave the building, call Sasenta on the phone, cancel work, and then go back inside the property and go back up to the job board, there's a pretty solid chance Union Depository will be there. If it's not, rinse and repeat after probably a minute of doing this, it will pop up, and it is 100% worth the effort because you're going to be making double the money compared to the other auto shop contracts. Overall, the auto shop has a very solid way of making money, and when you pair that with the fact you have massive discounts, especially unlocks at a low level, it's huge. One other thing I should mention is paint jobs. The auto shop unlocks all rare paint jobs. Ones where, like, lime green, you have to go do sea races, who wants to do that? Especially low levels, there's no way that's happening in 2024. The auto shop gives you all the unlocks when it comes to paint jobs, which again, is just a huge lifesaver. So definitely would recommend to buy it. In the number four position, we have a very easy business to talk about, which is the arcade. I actually love this property and it's probably one of my most used. First of all, let's talk about the upstairs, which is the main floor. You'll notice I have Monkey's Paradise literally every single slot in the arcade and that is because it is the cheapest arcade machine that you can buy and for some reason rockstar doesn't care if you spam the exact same one in every single slot and you're going to make the maximum amount of passive income if you do this at five thousand dollars every 48 minutes once all that money is accumulated, it's going to hop in the safe right here, and it's going to max out at $100,000. At this point, I've collected well over $3 million from my arcade's passive income, which is pretty good judging that the property itself cost about $3 million to get fully kitted out. So just the passive has paid for the entire property. But then we arrive at the master control terminal, which is by far the best thing about this business, and it's my favorite thing ever. So if we take a look, we've got a bunch of different properties in front of me. We have the nightclub, gun running, coke, all the motorcycle stuff. Then we got vehicle cargo, special cargo, and air freight cargo. Let's say I want to source air freight cargo. Well, that's fine. Go hop over here and I press source and it's literally just like I'm inside of my hangar. And oh, let's say I'm done with that and now I want to do special cargo. Well, that's fine. I'm registered as a CEO. I can sell my cargo here. Oh, I don't want to uh, do my sourcing while I can sell it. It's so easy. You can do vehicle cargo, then you can go over your gun running and you can do all of that stuff here. You can manage your nightclub popularity. Notice how my nightclub has like zero popularity right now. Well, if we go to resident DJ and we go to Solomon and we rebook him and then we go over to Dixon and we rebook him and then we go over to Solomon again and then we leave the page, you'll see now my popularity is at about 30%. So you can run all of your properties from this one business and it makes doing sale missions, it makes doing sourcing and keeping an eye on your overall product way easier and I would highly recommend to do so. The final reason why this property is amazing is down to the fact that it has a heist, the Diamond Casino heist, which pays you about the same amount of money as the Cayo Perico heist. The difference is you need two people instead of one, but still, the fact that you can do this heist make a lot of money paired with the fact that you also can purchase this property and control all of your other businesses while making passive income is kind of crazy and it's definitely one of the best investments that you can get. In the number three position, we have one of the undisputable goats, the nightclub. This property is amazing. You have two different ways of making money with the nightclub. The first is your passive income. Right now, we can see that I have $100,000 in my wall safe and my popularity is pretty much in the dumps. But Marcel just messaged me on the phone. And he said, if I kick somebody out who's puking in the bathroom, he's gonna raise my popularity. You can do this whenever you hop into your nightclub once every 48 minutes. If you hop into passive mode, apparently you can do it every time. Pretty sure Rockstar patched it though. Either way, we can see it raised my popularity by about 25%. That literally took me five seconds to do. You may have noticed already the other easy way to raise your nightclub popularity is by making your way into the arcade and then just swapping DJs back and forth. You can also do that in the basement of your nightclub, but if you do it on the top floor of your nightclub, you're gonna have to go through a really annoying cutscene watching the DJ swap position, so definitely do it inside the basement of your building. 
The second way of making money with the nightclub is selling goods that are accumulated throughout your other businesses. If we go to warehouse management, we can see that there are five technicians spread across. And these technicians are assigned to different goods. We have cargo and shipments, which is special cargo, sporting goods, South American imports, which is obviously the Coke. We've got pharmaceutical research, which is the math lab, organic produce, which is the weed, printing and copying, and cast creation. All of these different businesses you need to own. And when you purchase them, you can assign these technicians to those properties. And over time, while doing literally nothing, they will give you passive income. We can see I have $1.24 million sitting in this property ready to be sold. Now you can sell this in a public lobby and get an additional 50% for high demand bonus, or you can sell in a private lobby. Either way, it's really easy money, and I would highly recommend to purchase this property. Even better than that, the nightclub also has vehicles that are incredibly well armored and super dangerous, like the Vapid Speedo Custom, a minigun wielding truck. And you can also literally use the minigun as a remote weapon, so it's kind of insane in that regard. You also have a missile firing MTL pounder. We're, currently, we're driving the mule, which is kind of useless. It does have missiles, but uh, they're only front mounted, which doesn't do all too much. Either way, the nightclub is an incredible property. Definitely would recommend to buy it. In the number two position, we have the Agency, and this is one of my favorite properties in the game, mainly because it has so many different opportunities to make money. Starting off, we have security contracts. This is the basic way of earning cash. Completing security contracts should take you like five to eight minutes. They're pretty quick to do. And in return, you're gonna make around fifty to $60,000, depending on which one you're doing. Then you're gonna have to wait a small cooldown before you can start it again. Security contracts not only give you a decent amount of payment for how quick they are to complete, but even better than that, you also get passive income. And I should mention permanent passive income. Every five security contracts you complete, you're getting $500 added of passive income every 48 minutes. And this obviously goes until you complete 200 contracts. At that point, you will be at the grand total of $20,000 every 48 minutes for life. Does not matter if you log in the GTA, five years from now, you will still be making that passive income, which is kind of crazy, and it makes the property alone worth it there as a long-term investment, especially if you're a new player. I am currently going to plan on doing five security contracts every day on my Plays for Free account, and it should only take me about 40 days, and then I'll never ever have to do it again. The second way of making money with the agency is payphone hits. You call Franklin on the phone, you request a payphone hit, and he's gonna say, hey, go kill this guy, do it in this task in this amount of time, and if you complete it properly, you're gonna earn $45,000. Usually payphone hits take around three to five minutes to do. They're a very good way of making money, especially because there's only a 10 minute cooldown. So what I usually like to do is a security contract and a payphone hit. A security contract and a payphone hit. Pair those together, you're actually making some decent income. The final way of making money with the agency is the Dr. Dre VIP contract. This is going to pay you $1 million. Not only that, but on your first completion, an additional 250000 That's a lot of money. So the Dr. Dre VIP contract is amazing, and when you pair all of these things together, it is a great way of earning income. Sure, the Kosatka makes more, which, funny enough, we'll be talking about the Kosatka very soon, but in terms of overall capabilities, I'd still rate the agency as one of the best investments in the game. And there's still one final thing I should say about the agency, and that is Amani Tech Vehicles. Not only does purchasing this property give you a 21 car garage for free included, but you get the ability to upgrade Amani Tech cars. In front of us, we have the Canis Terminus. When you upgrade Amani Tech vehicles, they are able to withstand multiple explosions, basically making them impervious, especially when you pair that with the fact you can put a missile lock on jammer. The agency is kind of nutty and uh, yeah, definitely buy it. And in the number one position, we have the Kosatka for multiple different reasons, which we'll obviously be talking about. First of all, we have the Kaioprico Heist. This is obvious, but it's very true. It is still the most efficient way of making money in the game, and I would highly recommend if you don't own this property to buy one, just so you can get your hands on the Kaioprico Heist and make a decent chunk of cash there to build up your other properties and businesses. That alone is amazing. You're gonna net around a million dollars each time you do the heist, and you can get it done, start to finish with all the setups, at around 40 to 50 minutes if you're fast enough. 
we also have the fact that you can get the Sparrow. This is probably the most useful tool that you will be using until you get your hands on the Oppressor Mark II, and even then, I still prefer the Sparrow in certain situations. You can call the Sparrow in wherever you are instantly next to you. Not only that, but it flies really fast at the top speed of 169 miles per hour. It features unlimited homing missiles, and it has flares, making it very hard to knock out of the sky. Plus, when it gets blown up, you don't need to call MMI. It instantly gets returned to your Kosatka. Two minutes later, you can call it back like nothing ever happened. To finish it off, the Kosatka also lets you fast travel. If you head over to the Helm, you can pay $2,000 after completing your first heist, and you can travel to anywhere on the map. It is the fastest mode of transportation in the game, and because of that, I have to say the Kosatka is the best investment in Grand Theft Auto Online. There's not nearly as much going on in this business than there is for the nightclub, the arcade, or really any of the others, but what it does have is money, ease of access, and transportation. And when you pair those things together, it is by far the most important thing that you can buy in the game. Let me know if you agree, if you disagree. This is my pick for the top six best things to buy in Grand Theft Auto Online. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, I'll see you in the next one, and please consider smashing that subscribe button down below as this took a lot of effort. See ya!